Welcome to Podcasting Smarter, the podcast for podcasters by podcasters. Podcasting Smarter is the official podcast from Podbean, featuring podcasting interviews, best practices, and helpful tips. We're here to give you the tools, resources, product updates, and news to help you get started podcasting and keep your podcast growing. I want to talk a little bit about how the show's made and how guests are selected for the episodes, right? This is what you were speaking to, Dan. You have Adventurous Audio and you're a former BBC producer. So it's something where you have that audio expertise, which is fantastic. So in terms of how the show's made, Roy, I'd love if you speak a little bit about the seed of it and how that grew and how you guys decided on having a branded podcast. And then, Dan, I'd love to hear you speak about what it's like when you're out there interviewing people who've put their lives on the line or who've been saved by the RNLI and what that experience has been like to capture their stories and to share them with, obviously, the world and the UK and the RNLI community. So, Rory, can you start us off just talking about the origin of of how the podcast got started? Yeah, sure. With the 200th on the horizon, I guess we knew it on our established content channels, what we the kind of thing that we would do. We've got a print magazine. Print. We knew there would be a kind of special edition. We knew what our email marketing would be looking like. We knew the kind of thing that would do well on the social media platforms. But we were relatively new to podcasting. We had dipped our toe in the water a little bit. And We spoke about there should be a podcast, but how do we use podcasting to do justice to 200 years? And initially it was, do we do a one-off kind of history podcast? And it was like, where do we even begin? What milestones do we include? Won't Radio 4 on the, the BBC be doing something like that anyway? Then it was talking about maybe we could dive into specific milestones and that's an episode. But where we had dipped our toe into the water with podcasting, we knew that people were listening to single voice podcasts and deep diving into one character and that character's story. We were like, the best way to get the breadth of the history, but also we want to celebrate who we are today. We want to inspire the future. What if we had lots of different representatives of those stories and those milestones and those activities? Okay, yeah, that's great. But how many do we do? And then someone said, 200 years. It's got to be 200 voices. And we, we all took a deep breath yeah. and said, okay, let's see if we can do it. And two things, really. In terms of selecting them, we knew there were some must-haves. The people that were having this discussion, quite a few of us had been at the Iron Life for some time, so I knew quite a bit about the Iron Life's history, and, but also where the charity was going and some of the characters around that. So we, had a, we were able to get a shortlist. And then from there, you, we, we did a, a continuous audit of, okay, is this representative of the different locations around the island and the UK? Is this representative of different roles? Is this representative of the key milestones in history, but also where the r is going? But then in order to achieve that, we had to have a formula. We had to have a way of, I don't know if people watching have a master chef in their countries, but oh, it, yeah. it, it's an analogy I often use because yeah, there's been so many series and each series has so many episodes and yet that it, each one feels different because you're pouring different characters and recipes into each one, but it's got a brilliant formula mm. that means you can keep making them and making them good. But we did need production expertise and there isn't someone sat at the RNLI waiting to be asked to make a, a podcast. A 200 uh, episode a, podcast, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. right? laughs> yeah. Just in um, case we've got this guy hiding in the corner, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. We're a charity and we have to squeeze the value out of every kind of investment that we make into gathering content. But we did need that expertise. And that's why we were we were so lucky with Dan. And over to you, Dan, because you had great ideas about how we could make this a reality. It, indeed. And I remember very clearly one of the first conversations we had about this when Rory and his colleagues talked about the project to myself and my business partner, Penny Latin-Stewart at Adventurous Audio. And they said, we've got this idea. We're going to do 200 episodes. And I sat in my back in my chair and went, oh, wow. Ama- ambitious, yeah, but amazing. A, yeah, um, big and, undertaking, um, but big anniversary. And <laughs> absolutely. And as Rory and the team started to talk about it in the way that Rory just has done, immediately I could hear this audio project coming alive in my head. I could hear the stories. I could hear the voices. I could hear the waves of emotion that we were going to experience throughout these episodes. Once Rory and the team had, they had their must-haves 
And because of my background experience, I had lots of people who I knew all through my years. And I said, what about this person? What about that person? And so the list was always evolving. They probably went, oh, not another one yeah. from Dan knows. But when it came to the actual production, from my point of view, everyone had to have a story. Then there needed to be a story there. So from a branded perspective, there might be someone who was a, a pivotal moment in part of the RNLI's structure or history or community or one of their formative pillars. But we needed to make sure there was a story around that person. And so there was a bit of work to make sure we had those stories, because once we had the story, then from my point of view, being able to sit down and, and have a conversation with these people. And what I did always was say, this is a conversation. This is not an interview. This is not a, don't think of this as a formal interview. By the way, I used to be a volunteer. Right. So this is a conversation between volunteers. And straight away, you could see people yeah. relax. You could see people were at Oh, ease. I think that's just such that a, great a great way to disarm people. Yeah. Oh, and but it, it put us on a level that was straight away. We were talking at the same level. We under, they, they knew I understood that where they were coming yeah. from and vice versa. And then it was, do you know, it was just a privilege. If I'm really honest, Norma Jean, it was such a privilege to be able to sit down and talk. Most, a lot of these conversations were done remotely because the RNLI and us at Adventurous Audio have to think about sustainability and our carbon footprint when we're coming to production. So we had to find a way where we could do 200 episodes without, without a, an environmental impact, a significant environmental impact. So most of it's been done remotely. Yeah. We sat down and we just had a conversation. And as a producer yourself, you know when a conversation starts to come alive, when it starts to glow and you can see someone is relaxed and they're trustworthy. If someone can trust you in a conversation, they give you more and more. And so some of these conversations, Rory's initial brief was we're looking for something that's about 10 minutes long. Some of my conversations might have been about 30, 40, 50 minutes long. And then that left me in the position to try and edit down into the gold to try and tell the story. Those long form conversations are still there. And perhaps we might come on and talk about how they are might be used in the future. But I would say when you were asking about the production of it, it's just it's humbling that somebody would sit down and tell their story. Once we had the the audio story, it, then it was just a matter of case of using the building blocks. We we commissioned some music from a composer John Nichols here in the UK. John's an award-winning composer who does work for the BBC, for Audible and many audio dramas as well. And his brief was, we need something that will tell the story of a rescue in the music. It needs to have different pacing. It needs to give us, from a production point of view, some bridge points, in points, out points that we can use in a variety of different situations and shift the tone and the emotion of the story too. That was quite a challenge yeah. to give one piece of music to work for 200 episodes, 200 different stories. But he smashed that brief, absolutely. And so we have a really powerful piece of music that sits with each story. We've got the story themselves. We've got the focus of how do how has the RNLI changed, affected somebody's life? And, and there you are. That's your key ingredients that rest, yeah. Rory talked about for the MasterChef analogy. I just had to build the rest, do the recipe. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to come back to that kind of formula, Rory, that you had mentioned earlier. I definitely want to come back to that. But Dan, also with Adventurous Audio, it's the perfect Venn diagram, right, of your personal purpose of volunteering with the RNLI versus your experience as an independent audio producer and former BBC producer. It's, it's all kind of one. So it sounds like it was really one of those projects where like all of your experience led up to this, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I put my hand on my heart. Adventurous Audio is quite a young company. We're just over three years old. We started in the middle of the pandemic. And to be able to tell, for, I think to go back a little bit, for the RNLI to trust a young company with their brand in to do a branded podcast yeah. is a huge privilege. Clearly, we've got a bit of history and hopefully Adventurous Audio mm -hmm. come with the pedigree. But for the, I think it's a great, it's a great honor to our, sort of reputation that the RNLI, yeah. an internationally yeah, recognized brand, should entrust themselves yeah. to to us, Adventurous Audio, a small, we're just two people. Hopefully we punch a little bit above our weight. <laughs> Our company, yeah. we're just starting out. And yes, you're absolutely right. For me personally, this was like yeah. everything coming together. I have been 
knocking on people's door at the RNLI for many years saying, we need to do audio, we need to do audio, we need to do audio. And then yeah. it was a chance <laughs> yeah. email really to Rory out of the blue that kind of said, hi, Rory, I'm Dan. I think our paths have crossed in the past. Are you doing anything about audio? And he said, actually, yeah, we are. Let's, yeah. let's have a chat. So it, yeah, the absolutely. place, right time, right and- background, very fortunate. Yeah. And I think in just in comparison to the other work that you do, like you're not necessarily volunteering for all of your cli- other clients' organizations, right? Like <laughs> every client but, that you bring on, it's not, oh, I volunteered there. <laughs> absolutely. But what is really important for us at Adventurous Audio is who are we talking to? We do quite a few different branded podcasts. Yeah, that alignment. Right. And who do you want to talk to? That's always our very first question. And I remember asking that to Absolutely. Rory too. Who do you want to speak to? And he said, everyone. And that's what everyone says. But it's who do you really <laughs> want to speak to? Who is your audience? What's the message you want to get across? And that's what we do at Adventure Audio. We help people, individuals in some cases, but also brands translate their key messaging their story into that wider public domain, just like many other podcast or audio production companies and branded podcasts. It's, but it's taking, that, it's taking that nugget of the story and saying, how can we translate this? How can we develop it, but keep it relevant and keep it key to what your message is? And I hope that's what we've done with, with 200 Voices. Yeah. No, absolutely. And yes. And Rory, I absolutely agree with what Dan said. When you first start a podcast, who do you want to talk to? Everyone (laughs) all the time, tomorrow, yesterday, because podcasting is such an exciting medium and it's something where people are going to listen on the go for everybody who's even on location, right? Like you guys had mentioned at the beginning of our conversation today, somebody out in the field was able to introduce the podcast there on the spot. So that's what's so great about podcasting. And I think we all know that when you find a great podcast, you share it. You're excited. You're like, oh my gosh, you have to hear this. It's so amazing. And with that, with aligned with that purpose that RNLI has, I want to ask you in terms of the formula that you guys end up going with. And I think, Dan, you had spoken about this a little bit, especially with the music that you guys had composed for the podcast. And of course, you know, for brands, there's so many different ways to have that auditory signature in terms of your music. And, you know, of course, there's free music out there. But I think if your brand can't afford it, it's something that really does make the difference because you'll be able to use it across platforms. And, and we can talk about more in regard to music later, but it really creates that auditory signature, right? You can use it throughout your social strategy. You can use it throughout any videos you had for the duration of the life of the brand, which for RNLA has already been 200 years, but having that auditory signature, having that custom music is, I just quickly wanted to say that's an incredible feat. But Rory, in terms of that formula, what have you seen in terms of, if you can break down even a little bit more, what have you seen in terms of the structure that you guys created? And obviously there is the freedom within that structure and the different personalities and the different experiences. And Dan was saying the different stories, but In terms of that structure, you have obviously the music, the beautiful music, right? But what else have you guys utilized in terms of the structure you created for each episode to create this real library of 200 different voices and episodes for the anniversary? There's something I I meant to mention earlier, actually, and that is that Dan and Penny had this great idea of promoting other episodes at the end of each episode by hearing, reading from someone. And we often use someone who's quite high profile. and to your point about who's the audience, everyone, it's the worst brief you can give anyone in content <laughs> or marketing, isn't it? And I'm normally normally the last person to enjoy that kind of requirement, yeah. reach everyone, please. But w- one of our ways of hoping to do that was by having some episodes that were from some names that people would recognize outside of the RNLI. So for example, Timothy Spall, who perhaps best known internationally as an actor in Harry Potter, Ruth Jones, who together with James Corden wrote and performed in a hit UK show called Gavin and Stacey, a variety of of people, a guy called Mark Pusey, who's a volunteer in central London for the RNLI, where our busiest lifeboat stations are actually, believe it or not, on the Thames. But when he's not doing that, he's drumming for Ed Sheeran on tour. Being able to have those people do these kind of back annotations in the episode and say, you're listening to 200 Voices Collection. My name is Timothy Spall. For more great stories, go to. has been a brilliant part of the structure because if you come in to the podcast relatively cold and you hear one episode, you might be forgiven without exploring it for thinking that you're going to get a very similar set of stories. And a great way of showing that 
the huge breadth and variety of this series was that right at the end of the podcast, you often hear a very different voice from someone who's got a very different role mm. and perhaps someone that, that you have heard of that expands your mind about what you're going to get across these 200 episodes. So the structure, yeah, a sound, sound ident that, that we created at the start that we're using across our socials as well. The music, normally a hook, at, like every great podcast, you get a little grab of gold from the person. Music swells. You get a bit of an intro or the beginning of the story. It has a great beginning, middle and end. It uses the soundtrack brilliantly because the soundtrack has a beginning, middle and end. It sounds like a rescue. All is calm. There's drama, there's jeopardy in the middle, and then there's a happy ending. And that tends to be the narrative arc of, of the episode, notwithstanding some of the very sad and in some cases, funny episodes that we've had actually. Yeah, absolutely. And I love what you said about that arc of a rescue. I think that really translates as well. And just the intention put into the show is really incredible. And for everybody out there who is working on a branded podcast, considering a branded podcast, it's something where there's so many different ways you can really creatively express the brand's identity through a podcast. And I love what you said there as well. And especially with tying in the stories of the RNLI with these familiar voices, I think when something is tied into to a something else that you know from the world, like a public figure or a place or a specific event, people can really bring that into their awareness in a different way. And it really brings those stories into view, I think, in a, in a different way for everybody listening, right? It's not just niche. It's not just stories of rescue. It's not just maybe this one episode, but it's we're a community. This is what our organization does. And you're part of it by listening. And this very well-known public figure is also part of it and but creates that feeling of oneness as well. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Podcasting Smarter. If you have any podcasting questions or want to get in touch, send us an email at podcastingsmarter@podbean.com. at podbean.com. Thanks so much and happy podcasting.